All right, so we're going to talk about Vesper models, uh, basically the shapes that uh, covalent compounds take, uh, take the form of uh, when they come together. So we've drawn those dot diagrams. Uh, now we're going to take them and make them three-dimensional models and actually what they actually look like in space. And we're going to call that Vesper, valent shell electron pair repulsion. Okay, so let's, the, one of the first shapes we want to talk about is a linear shape. Um, something that take, that's linear is carbon, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. So let's take a look at those and see how they, uh, how they come, line up. So we know carbon monoxide, sorry, we're going to talk about carbon dioxide, um, looks like this. And we want these guys, these oxygens, to be as far apart as possible. We know these electrons are repul repulsed by each other, meaning that they're going to be as far apart from each other as they can. So they're actually going to create a linear form. Um, this angle is going to be 180 degrees, as far apart from each other as they possibly can get, uh, which makes our linear shape. Another type of linear that you might see is carbon monoxide, which is two atoms. Anytime you see two atoms, no matter what they are, they're going to have a linear shape. So carbon monoxide is triple bonded. And no matter what, these are going to be uh, straight across from each other, an angle of one, uh, 180. So these two types of molecules are linear molecules. They're straight across. Something that's, that's close to linear but not quite is a bent molecule. Let's take water, for example. Water. I'll just draw it like this. Water, our Lewis dot structure looks like this, right? We have two lone pairs of electrons and um, two hydrogens bound to it. Well, actually, we want to have these, these lone pair of electrons, these unbonded pairs, want to have as much room to play around as possible. So the bonded ones are a little bit more restricted, so they're going to push these guys down. So what it really looks like is this. And you've probably seen this before. So these guys create have as much room as they can to like move around and play, and these guys are kind of pushed down. This is what we call a bent molecule. The difference between linear and bent are these lone pairs. Notice the linear doesn't have any lone pairs in the central atom, but the um, bent, however, does, which pushes it down, making it a bent. The angle between this is 104.5. Okay. Another type of bent molecule you'll see is something like ozone. Ozone is O3. It looks it's a resonated model. I'll just do one of them looks like that. Notice the difference between this guy is this has two lone pairs of electrons, this guy only has one. It doesn't matter. The electrons are still going to want as much room as possible, making these guys push down, making it look like this. Also a bent molecule. So these lone pair of electrons here and here make the bent molecule um, different than the linear molecule. They wanna, um, they're actually going to make these guys closer to each other. Okay, So that is the bent molecule. The third type is a trigonal planar. These guys have a central atom and three electrons around them. The other one's just had two. This one has three, making hence the trigonal planar. So let's do the um, sulfur trioxide. We have sulfur. And this also is resonated. I'll just draw one of the resonated structures. Um, it looks like this. Um, sorry, I'll draw the lone pair of electrons around those also to make it better. Um, and these guys are going to want to be, these are in one plane, hence trigonal planar. So they're in one plane. Um, they are as far apart from each other as possible, so an only, this is going to be a 120 degree angle between the different oxygens. They're actually going to be equally spaced throughout. So that's an example of trigonal planar. There's three atoms around the central atom, hence trigonal. Something very similar to the trigonal planar is trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal pyramidal, ammonia is a good example of trigonal pyramidal. So we have our nitrogen. Um, I'm just going to draw this regular. Notice the same thing. This, between this one and this one, the major difference is our lone pair of electrons. This one doesn't have them, this one does. The same exact idea is going to happen. These guys are going to go crazy and they want to have a lot of space. They're going to push those hydrogens down into a pyramid shape, hence pyramidal. Okay, it's going to kind of sit on it. Um, and this is the bond angle between these hydrogens is 107.3. Okay, it's my favorite radio station actually. So um, this is a trigonal pyramidal. Notice the massive differences in lone pair of electrons. This one doesn't have them. This one does. The last one you're probably going to see in class is going to be tetrahedral. Tetra, don't forget, is a prefix for four. So you have a central atom with four, elect four um, atoms around it. So we have carbon with four hydrogens around it. These guys, all two, will, are going to be equally spaced out. The angle is going to be 109.5. An actual, I actually have a 3D model of this of what it actually looks like. 
because you think they're not in the same plane like this picture describes. They actually look like this, okay? So we have our carbon in the middle, let's say, and we have the hydrogen surrounding it in an equally spaced area, okay? So no matter how I turn it, the hydrogens are going to be, look, it's going to look like the identical, identical um, shape, okay? Um, it's not actually on the same plane as it actually uh, depicts here. Um, so those are the five main shapes that you're going to see. Again, they're called VESPER models, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Um, and this is what covalent compounds look like in 3D.